Susan, what do you know about the, what we're working with? Well, what I wrote down really surprised me because I've never thought about it before. And I wrote down that I was too much, <gasps> too loud, <gasps> and too big <gasps> for my mother. <gasps> I've never written that down before. <gasps> Uh, I just know that um, my mother used to say to me, I tantrumed till I was blue. Oh, wow. And they used to put me under cold water tap. Oh, my goodness. To bring me out. Oh, my goodness. And the other thing she did was keep feeding me. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. To cope. Yeah. 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 So as we step into this... She said, "You say you, that she told you this." Yes, she told me that. They, uh, she told me that many times. Mm -hmm. But do you remember it also, or just remember her telling you? I more remember her telling me. Mm. Um. Mm. I know I've often felt it difficult to express anger. Mm -hmm. And that it sounds like it was dangerous. Yeah. It was dangerous to express yeah. anger. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so let's let's keep the anger one in mind, just so because we might touch it. But um, let's start with this one. So we know so far, I Susan solemnly swear, and here's the here's the interesting thing, we can swear to ourselves. We can swear to our mothers, our fathers, our aunties. We can swear to our siblings, we can swear to God, we can swear to the universe, we can swear to our family line. So when, when, you, when you touch this... It was to my mother. It's to your mother. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I, Susan, solemnly swear to you, my mother... I, Susan, solemnly swear to you, my mother... That I will believe that I am too big and too much that I will believe that I am too big and too much in order to in order to and then just see, just feel into that in the body what's the in order to and here we're looking for what does the body know that we've never survive, put into words really. before really in order to starve no, to survive to survive in order to survive like my feet feel really firm on the ground uh -huh. now uh -huh. it's like even to be here uh -huh. I will believe that I am too much in order to survive and in order to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, and then this is the last part. No matter the cost to myself. <sighs> May I touch you? No matter the cost to myself. And then when we're accompanying this process, we're touching deep truths that have not been named before. And the body needs a little time to get used to being able to name something that it's been carrying, but which has not been named. So we just say to our partner, just tell me when this kind of comes to a steady place. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. And sometimes people will have tears, sometimes there will be heat. You, sometimes you'll be standing beside them and you'll feel heat boiling off of their bodies. Yeah, and sometimes it'll be very quiet. What's most important is if the body of this one has a sense of, yes, this is true. Yeah, yeah. I had a sense that the cost has been great. Yes, yeah, very great. So now you get to be your mother for a moment. <laughs> so just take one step over to the to the right there. And what's your mother's name? Mary. Mary. So welcome, Mary. <sighs> Thank you. Mary, did you hear your daughter Susan's vow to you? And this is an important question. I'll, uh, I'll write up the, the guiding process as well on the paper in just a moment. But this first question is important. 
did the one who, to whom the vow was made, whether it's the essential self or the mother or someone else, did they hear the vow? Because if you keep going and they haven't heard the vow, nothing will make any sense. So that's our first question. Did you hear the vow? Yes. Yeah. Then the next question is, how do you feel about this vow? She feels very sad. Uh-huh. It's not what she wanted for Susan. Not at all. Mary, would you please tell Susan, Susan, I release you from this contract. Susan, I release you from this contract. And I revoke this vow. And I revoke this vow. And I give you my blessing instead to... I give you my blessing to be all you can be. <laughs> to be as large as you want to mm. and fly. Mm. Let's find out how this is for Susan. <laughs> Makes me feel strong, <gasps> my head up, <gasps> uh, my throat. I have, s I have so much to say and teach. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels, feels okay. Feels a little bit something here, but let's stay with that for yeah. a moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just kind of investigate. And you had mentioned the anger at the beginning, yeah. and that's another kind of vow that we'll check in with her about. Um, but just see if there's something that comes, if there's something that speaks to you here in the throat. I just have a feeling of looking up. Hmm. Is there about a God? Ah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the vow to God? I, Susan, solemnly swear to you, God, that I will... I, Susan, solemnly swear to you, God, that I will love you always. Uh-huh. 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 And it's like, hold you deeply in my heart. Uh-huh. And be of service. Uh-huh. And then just check about the no matter the cost to myself. No matter the cost to myself. I see myself as a little girl when I say that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. With the nuns. Uh-huh. 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 Um, because there's a cost, we want to make sure that we're describing what the person is doing fully. Because everything she described was quite beautiful. So there might be another element there that the little girl did. I will only devote myself to you. Is there an only? Or I will love you m more than life itself or... Uh, Just have this enormous love mm -hmm. of God. Yeah, it may uh, just be an enormous love that just needs to be acknowledged. It yeah. may not. There may not be a, an exact cost in a way. I feel privileged. Yes, yes. Then it's a good vow. If somebody's, if there's not a cost, if someone's not erasing themselves in the vow, then we don't need to. No need for a release. But I, I need to be as big as I can be to. To, to do this. To do this. Yes, yes. So it lets you touch the love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. How does the little one like this, that you're touching her love and acknowledging yeah. it? It's just beautiful. Mm. She's okay. Mm. How's what's happening in the throat? Did we catch what needed to be caught? Yeah. It's like speaking my place in the world. Mm. Uh, and I feel my mother in my heart. Ah. Mm. But I just need to be all of me to do it. Yeah. Let's just check that anger thing. 
One of the things to know about anger, when we're working with anger, is that anger is, is, is a part of us, that we all have a rage circuit as mammals. And what the rage circuit is supposed to do is it is supposed to bring us the capacity for powerful advocacy and the capacity to have a clear sense of where, where, where it's right for us to be and where it's right for other people to be. It gives us a sense of our edges, our edges, our power, our advocacy. But often we've grown up in homes where there's an entanglement between the powerful rage circuit and the harm that people did when they were angry, or in this case, the terrible repercussions that this baby's body would have experienced when she tantrumed. tantrumed. So can we check for that? Yeah. So it's, it would be something like, I, Susan, solemnly swear to my essential self that I will turn away from my own anger. Yeah. I've done that all my life. Uh-huh. I will turn away from my own anger in order to To be accepted, mm -hmm. to be liked, mm -hmm. to fit in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, no matter the cost to myself. No matter the cost to myself. And again now, we've said the whole vow. We're letting this body adjust, experience, relax into. It's like it's stuck in the throat. It's like it's gone internal instead of external. Mm -hmm. Something energy has gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will swallow. Yes. Uh -huh. I will swallow my anger. I will swallow my anger. Uh -huh. And my righteous rage. And my righteous rage. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In order to s in order to survive, in order to belong, yeah, yeah, in order to survive, uh huh, uh huh, no matter the cost, no me. matter the cost to me, yeah, yeah. The feeling that's coming is that I need to take my space up. Yes. Yes. Freely. Mm. So we'll ask, we'll have, you, have you step one step to the side to just release the vow completely. Sometimes people are moving through it internally and you can kind of experiment with that, but it's really good to have the external spoken. So we'll say, essential self of Susan. Yeah. Did you hear the vow that Susan made to you? Yes. Okay. Is this a good vow for her? No. Please tell her, Susan, I release you from this contract. I release you from this contract, Susan. And I revoke this vow. And I revoke this vow. And instead you have my blessing to... Instead, you have my blessing to live a full life of who you are. Mm. Take up all the space you need mm. and speak who you are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may be angry. Sometimes you may be angry. Sometimes it may be joy. Sometimes it may be joy. Uh -huh. I felt... A little bit of my father there. Oh. So there are really three places of waiting. There's the place when the vow is first spoken. There's the place when the release is done, 
And then there, whenever you're ready to come back to Susan. And in each place, we let the body really settle. And coming back to Susan, just to see. Yeah, oh, stronger. Yeah. Head up and uh -huh. like that way, not up. Mm, very nice. Yeah. And how is the Freer. Very Freer very in my throat. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like she's standing here talking. It's yeah, yeah. I feel me. Uh huh. Very good. <laughs> uh, uh, what a delight! Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> The, the next thing we do in these circles is to just uh, take a few moments, if there's a need that was met or a gift that was received for you, being with this, to be able to name it, if you're willing to hear. Are you willing to hear? Yes. Okay, okay. So just making a space if there's something that wants to be said. Yes, Angel Kuli. It resonated with me when it she was talking about that suppressed anger. It resonated with me when she was talking about the suppressed anger. Yes. Mm. So, really powerful for me. Powerful. Mm. <coughs> Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yes, Anaya. The whole experience also resonated with me. The whole experience resonated Thank with me. Thank you, Susan. Doing this. Doing this. Mm. Thank you. Yes, Claire. Um, you know, it just reminds me how privileged I am to um, be here and how... Um, how privileged I am work, to be here and when someone does work. It's, um, it's healing for me too. It's healing it's for me too. too. It's my story too. Thank you. Beautiful. Susan, is there anything that you'd like to say before we transition to questions? No, I'm just sitting with it feels really peaceful. Sitting with it feels really peaceful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So uh, oh, now we'll open for any questions that you may have. It's almost like these, this work is like constellations compressed into just a tiny moment in a way. <clears throat> we find them in the constellation work, but we can also use this almost as an everyday tool when we feel ourselves coming up against things we believe we can't do, or actions we believe we can't take, or uh, a sense of coming up against an edge of, for example, shame, it's very interesting the relationship of this kind of contract understanding and Hellinger's understanding of guilt and shame and loyalty. Because when we take an action that we believe, it separates us from our group, there's a terrible shame or guilt that can happen. And once we become familiar with this, we have another tool to begin to be able to work with shame. Just yes, yes, absolutely. What's coming in our body? I found can it I difficult. put you on the mic? I find it difficult to be louder than my mother. Ah. She's a very gentle, soft, beautiful ah. lady. And I felt like I was... Le and I'm the opposite to that. Leaving her behind somehow. Yeah. Yeah, or not honoring her. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, we are in these dyadic relationships even, uh, even if we don't know that we're in them. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, I couldn't really know who I swore to. I couldn't know who I swore to. Uh-huh. Um, the, the most common is to the self because, um, because most often we are making these agreements in order to belong and be safe and love. And, and 
when a baby is in a position where they have to make these contracts, it means that the mom and or the mothering or fathering person is over to one of the sides. The baby that's in the secure attached relationship doesn't have to make the contracts because they're not being dropped or intruded upon in ways that make the baby have to figure out how to self-regulate. Is this making any sense? Yeah, my, my, um, I decided to, not to, to make a contract that I don't belong. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just the opposite of... Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. So here, here's one possibility for the contract of, of believing that we don't belong. Oh, there's so many possibilities. It's one I've been working with for a long time. Because um, there are layers. W with these contracts, there are often layers. And this, uh, I, this, is not a, this is not magic. This is a digging tool <laughs> that allows us to move into a different kind of relationship in a way with the edges of our soul or what we think the edges of our soul are. And we become bigger as we work with this. But for example, uh, a couple of possibilities that are coming to mind. I will believe that I don't belong in order to prevent the terrible heartbreak and disappointment of experiencing not belonging, no matter the cost to myself. <laughs> 